Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, a shooting in Floyd County last night left several law enforcement officers dead or injured and also left a canine officer dead. The sheriff has just identified in the last hour the officers killed as Deputy William Petrie and City Police Captain Ralph Frazier. WIMT's Jordan Mullins has more from the Floyd County Justice Center where the accused gunman made his first court appearance this morning following his arrest. After a shooting in Allen left multiple officers dead and more injured, the gunman, 49-year-old Lance Stores of Allen, made his first court appearance following the incident in Floyd County. Stores, who is being held at the Pike County Detention Center, appeared in court via a video conference Friday morning. An arrest citation made at the scene reports Stores as facing two counts of murder. I had a moment to talk with Floyd County Sheriff John Hunt and County Attorney Keith Bartley about the incident, and Bartley says those will not be his only charges. The charges from last night were the, uh, in the middle of a war zone, basically, and uh, we're done certainly about uh, information that was definitive at that time and for the police officer to go ahead and lodge this uh, worthless human being, in my opinion, in, in jail. But yes, there should be substantially more charges. Stores preliminary hearing was set for July 11th at 1.30 p.m. and his bond was set for $10 million. In Floyd County, Jordan Mullins, WIMT Mountain News. The sheriff even went so far as to call the suspect a terrorist. The sheriff, Hunt and Bartley both said many officers had severe injuries and also confirm at least one Floyd County Sheriff's deputy was taken to UK Hospital in Lexington and other officers from various agencies were taken to West Virginia and Prestonsburg hospitals. With the barricade situation just around the corner, a group at Wesley Christian School spent hours locked in the gymnasium. Coaches Sean Ward and Randy Reno heard the commotion before a woman alerted them about the active shooter. They moved the students into one space as they started looking for updates while the situation continued. Ward said the students worked to keep themselves occupied, but it was a tough several hours as they could hear the helicopters and gunshots as they hunkered down. Me and Randy, we also went back downstairs. We put a door or put a table against the door, put a couch against the door like we uh, broke a couple of things and uh, put it down into the door so the doors couldn't open. Ward said all they could do was pray for the officers who were outside of the doors, adding he feels blessed to have had Reno on his side to help keep their students safe while so much was still uncertain. As more information comes out about the aftermath of this incident, officers across the region are mourning the loss of their brothers. Public Affairs Officer for the Laurel County Sheriff's Department Gilbert Achardo says risks like this are a grim reality of the job and he hopes people understand that what they do is not simply just a routine and can look a lot different from what you see on television. And sometimes they wa we watch cop shows and cop shows don't always tell it the way that it is. Uh, the, the, the lives that law enforcement officers have to live on a daily basis. We'll have more reaction from police across the region coming up at 530 and a live report from Allen with some new information in just a moment. We've also been told we could expect a uh, news conference at some point this afternoon. We were told it could be around 245 or 3 o'clock and that has still not happened yet. If it does end up happening, we will try to take that live. Now we do want to take a, a moment and pause here to remind you about something going on right outside our station. We are partnering with the Kentucky Blood Center to host our annual summer blood drive. This of course has been something planned for weeks, but obviously when a, a tragedy like what happened in Floyd County occurs, blood is always an important need. Now our blood drive is going on but beside the station here in Hazard right now. It continues until 7 p.m. Donors will be entered to win a new 2022 Toyota RAV4 and a trip to Jamaica. You do need to bring your ID with you if you plan to donate. Again, the uh, blood mobile located outside our WIMT studios until 7 o'clock tonight. Well, typical summer weather continues across the mountains. It's warm, it's muggy, 
and we're watching out for a few showers and storms as well. Let's take a look over at I-75 this afternoon as the holiday traffic begins across the mountains. Looking at a mix of sun and clouds over at I-75 and same story over at the London Corbin Airport, but it is warm. Current temperature sitting at 88 degrees, 91 in Somerset, 94 over in Irvine, 83 for Jackson, 88 in Manchester, 75 over in Williamsburg where they've had a few showers around earlier today. Here is a look at pinpoint Doppler and scattered showers and storms continue and these will stick around into the rest of this evening. So if you have any evening plans, be sure to pack the rain gear just to be safe as a few off and on showers or storms will be possible. Temperatures falling into the upper 60s and lower 70s and more showers and storms are likely into your weekend. I have that full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. American basketball star Brittany Griner went on trial outside Moscow today, accused of smuggling drugs into Russia. CBS's Astrid Martinez has the latest. Brittany Griner arrived at court in handcuffs, facing trial on drug charges that could put her in prison for years. Inside, prosecutors unsealed their case, stating the 31-year-old basketball star brought two cartridges of hashish oil into the country for personal use. The two-time Olympic gold medalist and center for the Phoenix Mercury was arrested in February when Russian authorities said they found the drugs in her luggage as she arrived at a Moscow airport. After the trial's opening session, a diplomat from the U.S. Embassy said Griner was doing as well as can be expected. And she asked me to convey that she is in good spirits and is keeping up the faith. Griner's arrest came just a week before Russia invaded Ukraine. The Kremlin denies any political motivation, but Russia expert Jeff Hahn believes the American is being held hostage for political clout. It's, it's very clear that to, they did not need to bring the severity of charges against her that they did. They chose to do that in order to grab the U.S. attentions and threaten her with the worst possible outcome. Ahead of the trial, Griner's sister attended a support rally in New York. I haven't been in communication with her. I've been able to talk to her, and it hurts. U.S. diplomats say they are working at the highest levels to help bring Griner home. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. If convicted, Griner could face 10 years in prison. The prospects of an acquittal are said to be grim. Russian prosecutors have a 99% success rate. Only a third of the World Health Organization's 194 member countries have reached their COVID vaccination goals. The WHO reports just 58 countries have reached the target to vaccinate at least 70% of their population by mid-2022. The United States is among the countries that have fallen short. Overall, about 66% of the world's population has received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, and 61% are fully vaccinated. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Friday. The Dow closes up today more than 322 points, so a strong end to the week on Wall Street. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. Well, we want to go back to Floyd County now, where we do know two officers were killed in last night's shootout in Allen, and several others were also shot, including several law enforcement officers. It began while deputies had tried to serve a domestic violence order when they say a man now identified as Lance Stortz opened fire. WIMT's Phil Pendleton is live in Floyd County, and he's following the timeline of what happened. Phil, what's the latest? Well, there is still a very active investigation taking place here. Of course, this began late yesterday afternoon, went through the night, and the investigation is still ongoing. Dozens of police vehicles behind me, a very massive and active scene. All An entire almost neighborhood of Allen County is cordoned off with crime scene tape as investigators continue to do their work. This was a night of terror of what we are told for those in this community of Floyd County. The suspect, 49-year-old Lance Stores, arraigned this morning a $10 million cash bond set for him. He was booked into jail about 5 o'clock this morning, 12 hours after the nightmare for police officers and others from multiple agencies began. 
Four officers were serving some kind of warrant when police say gunfire began raining down on them. Two officers were killed right there. And to show how bad this war zone was, one officer actually had to hide under a car for hours and he suffered some carbon monoxide poisoning. In addition to the officers killed and injured, a canine also died that was never, never able to get out of the cruiser that it was in. And actually at one time, the, uh, the car that he was under uh, just took a barrage of bullets and, and shot the canine dog in the back seat. And Kentucky State Police are in charge of this investigation. We are still waiting to get some details from them on exactly what transpired. But we have been able to learn that the two officers killed are Captain Ralph Frazier and Deputy William Petrie. Live in Floyd County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. All right, Phil, thank you very much. Just a terrible scene there in Floyd County. You can find more coverage of the Floyd County shootout on our website, WYMT.com. You can also get the latest on the WYMT News app. Just scan the code on your screen with your phone camera to download the app. We are continuously updating this story, and you can also sign up for breaking news alerts. Before we go to break, if you can come back to me, Anthony, I do want to share some more uh, news that, that, that Phil didn't mention. He did say that we have learned those officers killed were Deputy William Petrie. Uh, you may know Deputy Petrie from his days with state police. He was the former uh, public information officer uh, for the Pikeville State Police Post. We interviewed him dozens and dozens of times uh, through the years, so he was a, definitely a familiar face here on WYMT. We um, all knew him. Uh, the city police captain, Ralph Frazier, 39 years old, was the other person that was killed, and we understand both of their bodies are being uh, escorted uh, back to the region at this hour, expected to be uh, back in Floyd County later this afternoon. We've also confirmed one name of uh, an officer injured, Prestonsburg officer Jacob Chaffins is, is in the hospital. Uh, state police say of the officers injured, one is critical, two are stable, and one has been treated and already released. There was also a civilian uh, injured in all of this last night. But again, we'll continue to uh, keep you updated as we go along. And uh, if there is a news conference, uh, at some point, we will try to take you there live. Still to come on First at Four, today marks 25 years since a historic handover on the world stage, marking a big change in global politics. And we stay warm and muggy into your holiday weekend. I have that full forecast coming up.